Well, here we are. Hi to everybody. I think we're two and a half weeks into lockdown two, but we're on part four of the road to Bethlehem on this journey that we're on together. Um, and we've looked, haven't we, over this last two or three weeks at how for hundreds of years, in fact, it was for over a thousand years before Jesus came, the prophets had said that someone was coming. Do you remember Balaam who cried out, didn't he, and said, I see him. But not now. I behold him. But he's not near. He's far out in the distance. He's a star. There's a star who's going to rise out of Jacob. Amazing things were said. And then Balaam went on and he said, this coming one will be like the sunrise. He's going to dawn inside people's hearts and he's going to shine like a sun inside of people. This coming one became known to the Jewish people as the Messiah, the one who was the anointed one, the Christ. And then we learnt how the day finally came in Israel when the prophecies began to be fulfilled about 2,000 years ago. It all began, didn't it, with this girl, this young woman, Mary, who lived in Nazareth. And how an angel came and spoke to Mary um, and said to her, you're going to have a child and this child is going to be the son of the most high God and his name is going to be Jesus. And last week we heard from Monica um, who did a wonderful message about Mary and she said that Mary was this young woman who said yes to God. Mary knew this was going to be hard, really difficult what she was being asked to do, but she said yes yes to God and Monica challenged us that we should be like this we need to be like this and now we meet the next person of Christmas because we're looking at the Chris at the Christmas story through the eyes of the people that were involved and this is the next person on week four this is Joseph he's the next person in the story and we don't know huge amounts about him but we know he lived in Nazareth um, and we know that the Bible says that he was a righteous man um, and he did what was right in God's sight. And he was engaged to be married to Mary. And then he starts to hear rumours about Mary. Um, and he hears that she's gone to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Um, and then Mary herself tells Joseph the story of how an angel has come to her. And that she's carrying a child, not Joseph's child, but the son of God. This was an extraordinary thing to say. And so the Bible says Joseph was thinking about this he was mulling it over but it says he was a righteous man and he always did what was right and so he's thinking how can I do what's right in this situation and he must have been thinking about it late at night because he fell asleep and he has a dream um, and in the dream an angel comes to Joseph this time um, and the angel the angel says to him don't be afraid Joseph don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife um, she's going to have a son and this son will be the son of the most high God and his name will be Jesus and he's going to save the people from their sins. And then it's now Joseph's turn. So he wakes up, it's Joseph's turn to say yes to God. And he wakes up and he, he by his actions and in what he does, um, he shows that in his heart he said, yes, God, I accept this extraordinary piece of news and I'll do exactly what you want. He's obedient to God. So Joseph, like Mary, has said yes. And I thought we should ask ourselves, are we saying yes? Even if we know the way is hard and both Mary and Joseph knew that in saying, God, we agree with your extraordinary rescue plan for earth and our parts in it. And in saying yes, it was going to be so hard, even though they knew it was going to be hard, they said yes. And I thought how easy it is for us to sing and say the words. You know, we sing the song, my soul says yes. It's so easy to sing it, so easy to say it, but it's another thing to do it. Yes, yes, I'll forgive that person. Yes, I'll put this thing right. Yes, I'll give my time to see that person. Yes, I'll give my money. Yes, I'll make the choice that you want me to make, not my own choice. It's a big challenge for us, but the rewards are huge. But having said yes to God, you know there was still a problem. And the problem was this, that the Bible had predicted that this Messiah, this precious child, was going to be born in Bethlehem. But Mary and Joseph and this little unborn baby, they're not in Bethlehem, are they? They're in Nazareth. They're, they're technically in the wrong place. And so enter 
the next character. He's not one of our official characters. He plays a minor role, but he was a very important man. He was the top man. In fact, he was the emperor, Caesar Augustus. He's the Roman emperor. Remember, Israel's oppressed by the uh, the, the Romans at that time. They were part of this big Roman empire. Um, and he was the top man. And God must have moved in his mind and in his heart. And suddenly Caesar Augustus declares a decree. He says everybody's got to go back to where their family originally came from. Everybody's got to move unless you're already there. There must have been thousands and thousands of people on the move at that point. Now, Joseph, this is where he comes into the story again. He is a descendant of the line of David. He's descended from King David and this Messiah had to come from this line and through Joseph, even though Joseph isn't Jesus's father, Jesus is part of that line. And so Joseph had to go back to where King David was born and King David was born in Bethlehem. So Luke 2 verse 4 tells us Joseph went from the town of Nazareth and Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of the King of David. I've got a little map here, it's a slightly crazy map, but if you look at the very top you can see the Sea of Galilee and near that is Nazareth. And they had to travel down 90 miles. Down, if you look, you can see the crosses, which is the mark, uh, which marks Jerusalem. They went through Jerusalem and down to Bethlehem. And there's a little bit of a manger that you can see there. Um, and that marks the place where Bethlehem is. And so this precious baby is now on his way to where he must be born in order to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy. Out of you, Bethlehem, will come a ruler who will shepherd the people of Israel. And so Mary travels with Joseph. She's heavily pregnant. It would have taken about a week to get there. And Joseph is doing what God has told him to do. But he's got another part to play in this story. Because the baby is born, as we know, and the shepherds come um, and the angels rejoice up in the skies. And then the kings come. And then this is the bit where Joseph has the next part to play. That night he has another dream after the kings have come. And God speaks to him and says, Joseph, you've got to take Mary and Jesus because they're in great danger and take them to Egypt. So if we go back to our map, you can see right down at the bottom in the corner, there's a picture of kind of Moses going through the Red Sea there. Well, that's where they had to go, perhaps another 150 miles, maybe more. I don't know about the scale on the map, but it was a long way. And they had to leave in a hurry because God had told them, flee, you need to run because King Herod is angry um, and he will come and he will try and destroy Jesus, take him to Egypt. So what's Jesus now doing in Egypt? Well, the amazing thing is that there are these prophecies even about this. The prophecies in the Old Testament are extraordinary. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, Bethlehem, from you a leader shall come. Then it says, out of Egypt, I'm going to call my son. And he will be called a Nazarene from Nazareth. And in Galilee of the Gentiles, on the road to the sea, a light will shine out of darkness. You see, actually the Bible said Jesus was going to be in four places. Um, and all of this happened. He was born, wasn't he, in Bethlehem. And then he was called out of Egypt. They fled to Egypt. And in Egypt, God spoke to Joseph and said, now's the time to come back to Israel. So he was called out of Egypt. And then he went back and they'd settled in Nazareth. Um, and then ultimately Jesus went to Galilee, which was in the, which Nazareth was in Galilee, but this Galilee of the Gentiles was right by the sea and Jesus went there. It's an amazing picture that in Bethlehem, he was the king of the Jews. Um, he was there as the savior for the Jews. In Egypt, he's there, isn't he? Um, as a picture for these Arab nations, that he's the savior for those Arab nations and that he was gonna be called out of Egypt, just like the children of Israel had been. And then finally in Nazareth and in Galilee, that area called Galilee of the Gentiles. How amazing he's there for the Gentiles. So for the Jews, for the Arabs, for the Gentiles, for the whole world, he's there as the saviour. And he began to shine as a, a bright and extraordinary light um, in Galilee um, as God began to pour out his Holy Spirit on him and use him when he was about 30 years of age. Amazing story, amazing part that Joseph played in it. Let's just pray. Oh God, we thank you for these extraordinary prophecies. 
that Jesus would come from Bethlehem. He'd be called out of Egypt. He would grow up in Nazareth, but he would ultimately be this bright and shining light in Galilee by that sea as your Holy Spirit was poured out through him. Father, again today we pray, could we know more about Jesus? Amen. Amen.